All right, now that I finally got that opening shot out of the way and the many takes thanks to this wonderful light. Bum, bum, bum. Bum. This is driving me crazy. What I have here is the Lewa Probe, Lewa, Le is it Lewa? Lewa? Lewa Probe lens. And uh, it's an F14. It's obviously has a very long snoot or nose. Some people have called it um, the anteater lens. Just rented it because I heard a lot about it and kind of wanted, wanted to have some fun with it. And uh, just got together with my buddy Corey. Bye bye. And, and decided why not just rent this lens in this pandemic when, when there's not a lot of paid work to do and, and just get out there and be creative and, and see my buddy and work with him for a few hours, set up an elaborate lighting setup and play with, with this lens and kind of see, see what the cool things we could capture with it. Maybe it can be used for, oops, sorry about that. Maybe it can be used for business purposes. Maybe this is just for fun. In retrospect, we filmed all of that probe lens content back in May. It's now June 25th, which is actually my birthday. And to call the content we captured in the shoot uh, a success would be a disservice because not only did we get to play with a new tool in the probe lens, we got to get back on set, we got to collaborate and have some fun. But the Harry Potter shot that I captured, I put on Instagram with the famous John Williams Harry Potter jingle. And another creative collaborator of mine, Finn and Gray, they have a client in Frisca and they wanted to use the probe lens for some product shots. And so the following week, I actually rented the probe lens again and this creative exercise led to paid work. Awesome. So obviously with a lens like this that is wide open at f14, you need a lot of light. And Corey and I went to great lengths to kind of piecemeal together this nice little soft diffused light box that we created on this paper sweep. This was the shoot, the moment when I realized that I needed a more powerful light for where I was on my production journey. Thus me buying the Aperture 300X. You can see it lighting me now. You can see my review of the light in the corner. Ah, love that light. But without this asset on the probe lens shoot, Corey and I went to considerable lengths. It took great effort to piece together our light kits to make this bright, diffuse softbox to shoot this content. Thus, the light purchase. Back to the video. And we've really just kind of maxed out a, a lot of little lights to really kind of illuminate this space so we don't actually have to use this this front element light. And I don't know what the CRI of this um, is, but I, I don't think it's probably very high. <laughs> so what I really like about this lens, dude. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Pro Blends recap. I appreciate your time. If you've made it this far, give this video a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. It certainly helps the channel grow. And if you do subscribe, you will be saving the lives of these four ninja squirtles for only $1 a day. Now, subscribing is free. Corey and I are actually wrapping up um, this day. We actually decided to extend this to a second shoot day just because of how elaborate this setup is. And, and it took about two and a half hours to really dial this in. So. We want to shoot more with it, so instead of just shooting super late into the night, it's actually Mother's Day right now, so I gotta get to sleep so I can make sure that uh, my boys and, and myself are taking care of my mom and my wife tomorrow. Anywho, so that's why we're deciding to, to wrap up night one and, and just like shoot in a couple of days and capture some more fun stuff with, with this tool and you know this crazy lighting setup and you know I can't wait to show you guys. I'll see you on day two. As we prepped for night two, Corey and I discussed a little bit more strategy as opposed to getting some more of the random corridor type shots that we had gotten on our first night. We discussed capturing content that was a little more detailed, specific, and planned. I'd recently seen renowned YouTuber Daniel Shifter create a Cheerios commercial in his dining room, as well as uh, another person I follow, Austin Paul, create a polished Pringles commercial at his house. And so I thought, why not um, go into, in, into the realm of food? And so I had this idea to have the probe lens 
come out of come out of a fast food bag and the idea grew from there. Because Chick-fil-A is a client of Corey's, he actually does some video work for some local Minnesota franchisees here. We thought we could potentially leverage this content into maybe some paid work from them. And if not, we would have a case study of some polished commercial food content. So in the end, we created some great looking content with our own money and almost no budget and really just our own creative ambitions. So imagine what we could do with maybe a creative directive and some budget. Uh, again, as I previously noted, we dealt with some shake with the slider, but we still were very happy with what we were able to capture. What's up everybody, Matt Deary, Corey Whipper, night two of our Pro Blends Black Magic Pro Shoot. And uh, last time we shot, we in here, you looking for this? I am looking for that. Last last time we shot, we shot on my slider, and when we looked through the footage, Corey definitely noticed that there was a lot of bumps in, in the slider, so we brought his slider. We think it's gonna be a little smoother. The Pro Blends works best on a slider, and we quickly discovered that you need a good or even great slider to make this lens sing. Unfortunately, you can see so much shake in our footage. The good thing is, is that we discovered this on a creative exercise as opposed to a paid shoot. On night two, Corey brought his slider and we substituted his in for mine and we quickly discovered that his was actually more wobbly than my own. Neither of our sliders are state of the art or even of the art, especially the way we were trying to use it, which was having the slider on top of two stands and that just really never helped us get the stability that we needed to have those smooth shots. And when you have a lens like this, which is, uh, especially when it's functioning as a macro lens, every single small shake looks like an earthquake. We spent so much time on the lighting and the camera and the follow focus and the big monitor that we failed to really take care of our main camera support, which was, in this, in this case, the slider. And ultimately, in the end, it hurt us. So instead of doing the shots and, and nailing them and moving on, we had to redo them over and over and over until we got something that had minimal shank that could even just be stabilized in post. And so uh, really being able to, to wade through that minefield of, of shake slowed us down immensely. Next time I rent this lens, I am going to either work from the ground like I did on the Friska shoot where the slider had less wobble from the stands, or best case scenario, rent a motorized slider where you have the exact same movements and the exact same timing and you minimize the shake immensely when you're using a motorized apparatus. Wireless follow focus. Yep. Another another difference in tonight's shoot is we have uh, Corey's follow focus hooked up here, and then we brought uh, Corey brought a monitor. We're gonna use that monitor to pull focus and have two operators making even better shots. So we're excited to um, excited to get our first setup in the mix and, and show you what we're working with. All right, let's create. All right, Corey and I got our first shot set up. We're gonna shoot food in a Chick-fil-A bag and we're just doing some art direction right now and staging everything really nice. We got a nice little loom cube behind the bag to kind of give the food almost like an angelic type look. So we're really excited about this first shot. It's taken a little bit longer to set up than than, than we'd really like, but it's gonna be great. Also, art direction definitely is not not one of my strengths, so it's probably taking a little bit longer because of that as well. well I kind of wish we had one person here who was strictly just art direction. Like after working with... I just David said that. Me. Let's shoot in the lemonade. So for this vertical shot, we actually had to mount the slider to C-stands by turning the tripod head plates sideways and holding the plates with C-stand knuckles with an apple box underneath to support the rig and minimize the shake. It took a lot of trial and error to get this shot as perfect as we could make it, to, to get the lens to find the center point of the cup to art direct the food. Uh, the front element of the lens is actually waterproof, so we did submerge the lens 
into the lemonade and to get it coming out. I mean, we had, you know, it was dripping and the and the resets uh, definitely kind of kind of took took some time out of our creative sales, but in the end, the the effort was worth it because I love this shot. You're, you're, you're killing me here. You're killing, killing his back. You're killing me. As I previously noted, I filmed this probe lens content back in mid-May. It's now the end of June. So this edit has kind of taken a little bit longer to piece together than I wanted. But in retrospect, I've had the opportunity to sort through and review and edit the footage. And I can kind of put together a little bit more of a conclusive post-mortem of the lens and the shoot. Now after Corey and I wrapped night two, I actually did record something at 2.45 in the morning, but as you can imagine, I really wasn't very sharp. So instead of listening to me ramble on in kind of a half comatose state, I figured I'd film another little, I'd film other little pieces to have a little bit more of a conclusive retrospective on the lens and the shoot itself. Time lapse this. Yeah. So a moment of confession here, I actually have to shamefully admit I lost some footage um, to my own stupidity. I shot two nights with Corey and then I shot two nights just by myself in, in my basement. And uh, on, a, on the fourth night, I shot some, uh, some cool chocolate cake shots as well as some mist onto some broccoli. And I lost that footage because the Samsung T5 drive that I record on, I actually uh, formatted it on the next shoot that I was on without having backed up the footage. And so it goes to show you that even with seven years of production experience, mistakes can still be made if you don't do the small things. And so thankfully it wasn't client footage and so I didn't have to learn anything the hard way, but I still am disappointed that I'm not gonna be able to review or use that footage. So takeaways, clearly you need a lot of light. That's well documented. The lens is an f14, so that's a given. But you also need a great slider. I would recommend a motorized slider so you can have um, precise repeated movements and you're constantly moving forward with what you're capturing as opposed to working backwards and redoing shots over and over. We also had much more success on night two with a precise shot list and, and a more calculated approach than more of the shotgun approach we took on night one where we just kind of decided to have some fun with it. So I would highly recommend kind of coming up with an idealized shot list and really making sure that you're, you're trying to figure out exactly what you're trying to capture with this lens. Thank you again for watching this video. Again, I appreciate your time. I will see you on the next one. Need to, you know, to be creative with the stuff about the things.